What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Bo. This is my channel, Mo Nation. So, uh, first off, I want to I want to thank everybody, all the new subscribers and everybody who's been watching the videos and stuff. You are helping the channel grow even more. And lately, YouTube has been pushing the channel a little bit more than normal. So, uh, make sure y'all keep watching the videos and all that good stuff. Um, eventually, uh, right now, I'm recording off of a GoPro, but eventually, I want to invest more into getting a better setup and stuff to give y'all better better quality videos like 4k videos and all that good stuff so make sure y'all keep um watching the videos um so in this video today what i'm gonna do is we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk a little bit about generators and what generator you need for your mobile detailing business and stuff like that um i'm currently on my third generator um, and in the video i'm going to be showing y'all a wash and wax as well just kind of showing y'all that all the equipment that I have inside the van for the, to do a wash and wax, uh, full interior detail, my generator power is all, all of that. So I do want to add this in. So what you're going to see me run in this video on the wash and wax is the water pump, uh, the pressure washer, uh, the air compressor, and the polisher. All that stuff is on at the same time. Now, obviously the air compressor, it's only it's, it's gonna kick on when it starts losing air sometimes my stuff will leak a little bit so it kicks on randomly but the water pump and the pressure washer i i, I just leave it on after I'm, i never know when i'm gonna use it so sometimes i forget about it and i leave it on now one thing i want to add you gotta have a decent generator for the polisher which is a little weird because you wouldn't think that it takes that much power but when i had my very first generator it kind of struggled to power that at that polisher especially when you if you got it at a low speed it's okay but once you turn it up um it's using a lot more power and i know for the very first generator i had uh it actually took like a minute or so for the polisher to actually turn up to the actual speed i needed i needed it to be at um and then you can't hear in the video but as i when i have it turned all the way up um the the idle it stops like idle and low and it actually gets pretty high so i don't know how much that how much power the polisher actually uses but that's just one thing to keep in mind so in the reason why i, I have it turned up is because i'm switching up the way i do a wash and wax i'm trying something out um i'm trying something new out which is doing a light polish with the wash and wax so i just believe that like if you're gonna do a wash and wax this is just my opinion I feel like well, I don't know why I'm using a polisher to do a wash and wax when you can you can do a spray sealant that will last just as long as your tra just traditional wax and it will create a shine just like wax. So now what I'm doing is if I do a wash and wax and I do a clay wire by hand, um, I do a very very light polish. Um, I'm just testing it out on some vehicles as I go to see if that if it makes a difference. On that vehicle, it actually did make a difference. Um, I did a panel and I left one side untouched and I did the other side and I did like a very fast light polish as you're going to see I'm going to go across go up and down and it did take out some swirls out of the paint and it did enhance the paint some with that wash and wax but that'll be in another video y'all that'll be another video let's go ahead and get this video started.
can see all the, all, just a little bit of equipment that I use is all powered by that one um, generator that I have. So that generator inside of the van is a Yobi 4000 watt inverter generator. So I chose to go with an inverter generator because I hate the noise. Um, that one, it is kind of, it is kind of loud, but not as loud as your normal um, generators. Um, and those, the inverter generators tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, the one that I have, like I said, it's a little, it, it, it has the auto idle on it as well, as well. So whenever I'm not really using that much power, it idles down some when I have to use a little bit more power, which is more so when I plug in that steamer, the steamer is the one that uses the most power. So, um, to be able to operate a steamer, your generator has to at least, um, it has to be at least at 2000 watt. Um, the generator, not the generator, the steamer itself is 1500 watts. So, but I can power the steamer, the air compressor and the vacuum water pump, all that stuff out pretty much at the same time on that generator. It may struggle a little bit with all that on, but um, it will power it. So the one that I have in there now, like I said, I haven't had any issues, but I'm gonna talk about the one that I had. My very first generator was um, the Harvard Freight, not Predator, but the, um, cause I, I forgot for a quick second. So my very first generator was the Harvard Freight tailgater so that one when i bought it it was like 109 dollars. i bought a warranty waited to where something happened i could bring it back and replace it um now i think that generator is like 119 dollars. i'm not too sure but that was my very first one i'm gonna put a picture up up here somewhere on the um on the video so that one i no longer have i actually sold that one to my neighbor which i may buy back i don't know just to have it so after i bought a new generator um which is in the background over here. I'm gonna show you that one. I upgraded to a 2000 watt generator. The Harbor Freight one, um, it was good enough. It actually powered my my steamer. I don't know how it powered that steamer because it is not even rated for, um, it's not even rated for that the, the power that the steamer puts out. So let me show y'all the, the one I upgraded to. This is the one that I upgraded to. This is a 2000 watt um when i think that's how you say it uh inverter generator so this one right here y'all is quiet um uh, it's pretty quiet if you go inside the house or anything like that uh with it being inside the van you barely noticed it sometimes it's quiet compared to your normal generator so this one's a 2000 watt um you got two plugs you can charge a phone and all that good stuff now, the only issue I had with this one is if I had to plug in, say, the steamer, I had to unplug some things because you can't, if the steamer was on, you could not run anything else. Nothing else can be on while the steamer is on. So I had to turn off the air compressor because sometimes my air compressor leaks a little bit. So it would turn on to refill it up back up. And if the steamer was plugged in, it would kick, it would uh, kick off the, the, the breaker on the generator. So I would have to come here, press the button, the reset button, turn turn the um, turn the uh, the air compressor off, press the reset button and all that good stuff. And you know, do you need a generator? Not really when you first start it, but if you can get you a 2000 watt generator, uh, this is a good one. Or you can get the Predator van from, not the Predator, or you can get the 2000 watt from Harbor Freight. Um, that would be good. The only issue you you have with a 2000 watt generator is that you're kind of limited of what all you can power on it. It will power all the equipment you need for mobile detailing, but you can't have it all plugged in at the same time. That's the now I have a Yobi, like I said, y'all. Um, I don't have the keys to my van, so but as y'all saw in the video with the wash and wax, the generator inside here, I'll put a picture up of it. Um, I got that one from, I think it's from Home Depot as well. Um, with that one, it, like I said, it powers everything. So it has four plugs. You can plug in four things. It also has like a plug if you, I don't know, like a, the same plug as like a stove plug. Um, but with that one, it powers everything. Everything, everything can be plugged in at the same time. Um, I can run my extractor and my steamer at the same time. So the steamer can stay on and I can do my extracting 
if I need to use the steamer to kind of get, you know, add some heat or something for a stain or whatever for the seat, I can do that. Before, I could not do that. Um, another issue with this one, with the 2000 watt, was that, so if I'm doing the seats or, the, or whatever, I would have to wait about 15 minutes after I'm done with the seats and extracted and stuff, I have to wait about 15 minutes for the uh, steamer to heat up because I couldn't have any other equipment on while the steamer was plugged in. Um, so I had to wait about 15 minutes for it to heat up fully so I can start using the steamer to do the full interior detail. Well, now with the bigger generator, I don't have to do that. So sometimes, sometimes, um, I plug the, gener the, the steamer in, I have the steamer warming up while I'm doing the seats or while I'm blowing everything out of the interior or whatever. So by the time I'm finished with that, the steamer is up to temperature and I can start using it. Um, other times, if I'm doing the seats and I don't feel like I need the steamer, um, I'll wait until I get to the very last seat, which is mainly most of the time, which is the rear seats. I'll wait till I get to those. Then I go plug the steamer in and then I let it warm up. By the time I finish with the seat, the steamer is ready to be used. Um, do you need a, gener a generator? You don't really need one. No, you don't really need one unless, um, not when you first start out, you don't need one. Um, but as you go, I think eventually if, if you're going to be mobile, it's just something nice to have to where you don't have to plug into the customer stuff. For me, everything is plugged into the generator. So my water pump, the pressure washer, the steamer, I have an extension card plugged into the, the generator. I have an extension card on a, on a reel as well plugged into the generator. So everything is plugged into it. So it makes it easier on me and not having to find a power source outside of the van and having to run in stitching cards or whatever. It just makes it way easier on my end. So to basically do a recap, y'all, uh, I'm not gonna hit every single point on which generator you use. As I make the videos, I forget and stuff. So if you have a question, comment it, comment it down below and I'm gonna try to get back to you. Um, to do a recap, I started off, with, I think that, that generator was a 900 watt generator, the Harbor Freight, um, tailgater after i i upgraded to this 2000 watt generator and then i then after that, that i had that issue with the stream i went and bought the 4000 watt generator now one thing i will say is make sure you pay attention to the runner watts because that's very important so um on the on this one i think the run the running watts is like 18 or something like that 1800 it's a it's under 2000 so that means anything over 1800 or whatever is gonna trip it's gonna trip the um uh, the fuse on the generator or whatever it's called it's gonna trip it so it's gonna turn everything off and you gotta come and press the reset button the one inside of the van that is a 4000 watt and it's i think it's a 34 or 3500 running watt uh so anything over 34, 35, it is gonna trip the, it's gonna trip it. I gotta go and press the reset button. Sometimes I gotta turn it off and turn it back on. Um, it's only happened to me twice. Most of the time, if it does trip it, it trips the um, the extension card that I have on there. The I have a long extension card, it trips that first. Uh, sometimes I had, like I said, twice when it tripped the actual generator. Um, but just make sure, that's the one thing to make sure. So. You have the, I think it's the starting watts and then you have the running watts. So like I said, the one in the van, the starting watts is 4,000. And the running watts, what, what it can actually power is like 3,400. Anything, like I said, over that, it's gonna trip it. So just make sure you pay attention to that when you buy in a generator. Now, you can, the inverter generators tend to be a little bit more expensive than your normal generator. So, you don't have to get an inverted generator. The only reason I got it is because they're a little quieter than your normal generator. And I don't want to be there, even though I mean, I'm there working, I don't want to be making so much noise to where they can hear the generator inside the house. Once they go inside the house or whatever, you can't even hear the generator. So, um, so yeah. But yeah, so like I said, y'all, if I miss anything, if there's anything you want to know, uh, make sure you comment down below. I'm gonna keep making these videos. Make sure y'all y'all keep watching and stuff so we can upgrade 
the equipment upgrade the camera and all that stuff so we can start recording in 4k and all that good stuff right now we just recorded in 1080p i think so um thank y'all for watching i hope y'all have a have a good day and i'll see y'all in the next one